Hello, I am Test Drive, and welcome to episode 31 of Forza Motorsport, where in this episode we're going to be using the Ferrari 612 Scaglietti that I won a while ago, I can't remember what exactly I won it from, but we are going to be using it to go race, and we are going to be doing the heavyweight runoff or something like that, one of the last few races of, or last few series of the uh, amateur events, and we have open cars weighing more than 3850 pounds or 1750 kilograms. First place wins the Aston Martin V12 Vanquish. And of course, here are the cars I'm racing against. V12 Vanquish, I'm racing against for some reason. And then Mercedes CL65, which I do have plans to use that in the future, but uh, that's definitely in the future. And then another Ferrari 612, and then a whole bunch of lower class cars, because they don't matter. So, let's go ahead. We'll get started with our first race on Sunset Peninsula Speedway, and then an infield Zach. Cool. Right, we're here on our first race at Sunset Peninsula. I feel like I should have a... Uh, Pretty good uh, advantage over the rest of the AI, except for, of course, the other 612, but that's to be expected. Um, the CL65 may present uh, danger to Manifold. I'm not entirely sure. <clears throat> so far, we're looking pretty decent. Well, except for the fact that the CL65 is catching up. Or not. Well, okay, there goes the other 612 ripping fucking rust and pepperonis. Goddamn. The CL65 takes no prisoners. Come on. 612, we got this, I think. That's like the only car that actually is going to give me any trouble is the fucking CL65. It's the only one that actually has a decent top speed other than this car. Oh, he slowed down. Okay. Never mind. <clears throat> We're good. No need to worry. Let's see, he's gonna be three seconds behind. So that's pretty cool. Ah, stop that. This is one of the strangest Ferraris I've seen. I don't know. That didn't make any sense. This is one of the strangest Ferraris that are in this game, I think. Because the 612 is like, you know, the big ass fucking front engine no fucks given, like, 4,000 pound fucking car. It's not in many games either. Now it's in Forza 7. Because Forza Twitter had something to do with it on Forza 7. Like a poll or something on Twitter. I can't remember. But, yeah, it's just kind of an interesting, uh... It's not, it's not what you think of when you think of a Ferrari, probably. You probably think of an Enzo... Or like a 355, or a 308, or something like that. Also, this AI is not very good around this track. The problem is that they slow down before the turns, which aren't really that much of turns. So, oh, there's the Mustang, the 70 Mustang, and fucking dead last. Yes. Stay in hell where you belong. Ah! This car does get a little slippery whenever you get, uh, exit the corners. But it doesn't matter because I have won after a little over two and a half minutes. Cool. We've got 19,000 credits, which is pretty fucking fantastic. I may level up. No. Eh. No. There's no way I'm going to get 100,000 more credits. No. I'm going to get like. 60,000 more credits at most. So I'm not going to level up this episode, sadly. Alright, we're here in our second race at the same track. Ha, <laughs> not really. Kind of. We're, uh, you know, doing the infield course instead of the fucking circle. And I've already goofed up my launch, but doesn't matter because the 612 is a pussy. Can't go through the first corner that easily, I guess. I like how, like, the far inside lights and the far outside lights of each side light up. Instead of being like all the lights, like I think they should be. Or I'm pretty sure actually uh, the circle around the turn signals is what actually lights up whenever you hit the brakes in this car. Like in real life, you know. The inside, if I remember, is just a fucking reflector. Eh. <clears throat> so it's kind of strange to see that. Why are you catching up? Go away. I don't want you here. Car is so fucking bloated looking. Ah, it doesn't turn very well either. Uh, 
Alrighty. Look at the front end, too. It's like... I don't know. It just looks fucking bloated to me. Also, this is definitely not an American market car, because there's no side marker lights. I don't know why I had to share that information, but I just did, so... Congrats, fun fact. I like giving out fun facts, because they're fun. Like how the... F Random thing, another thing. Looks like there's a Ferrari badge, of course, in the trunk, and then there's... It says Ferrari above that, like, on the top of the trunk on the edge. It's kind of weird. I think that normal Ferraris do that too, but like, they make sense because they go up and they're flat on top, and this car is just kind of like, you know, bubbly. I'm going to run into the wall. Or not. <laughs> I'll take that as well. Alright. I was actually expecting to smash a the wall there. I still lost a shitload of time, but luckily, uh, AIs are kind of nerds. And they're not that fast. <clears throat> Only two laps in this track, too. Huh. Except for this track is a lot longer to uh, go around than the fucking circle. It's an entire minute longer. Ah, that was not good. Also, banging off the rev limiter was also not good. But guess what? I don't care. Around the circle part. What was I going about? 180 around this? 185, I think, in the last race. So, you know, 150 is a nice change of pace. Although I'm getting up to 100... And probably going to get up to 170, but I feel like I would have flown off the track even further, so... Probably a good thing that I didn't try for it. Would not recommend. This thing just feels large to drive. Feels large, looks large, is large. Look at that fucking wheelbase. That is a quite massive wheelbase for a Ferrari. That's like probably longer than my fucking Ford Ranger, to be completely honest. An extended cab Ford Ranger. I feel like it is at least. It might not be. I'm actually curious now. I kind of want to look that up and see how long the wheelbase is of a Ferrari 612 and also compared to my Ranger it'll do that between races probably not because I'll probably forget because that's what I like to do I don't really like to do it but it happens anyways <clears throat> and coming up to do a flying finish, I'm going to hold on the throttle as long as I possibly can. Probably won't shift up. No, I'm not going to shift up. Alright, 167 is the fastest I got. Alright, total time was 502. Not too bad. Not quite even close to leveling up yet. Alright, here on our third race at Maple Valley Full for, I think, three laps. Nope, two laps. Surprisingly, not many. Yep, that's right. Slow your ass down. Oh, this, I think the CL65 just rear-ended the other 612. That's an expensive crash to fix. I want a CL65 AMG from that generation in real life. I know I've probably said before, but like, I really want one. And I feel like they're all really fucking expensive if you can find one. I don't even know if I've ever seen one for sale. I don't even know if they were sold in the US, to be completely honest. I hope that they were, because I would... You know, like to own own one someday. But it, knowing my luck, I'll probably not have enough money either A ever, or B 
Uh, by the time I do have enough money, they'll be, you know, skyrocketing in value. Or skyrocketed. Like, it'll be fucking $150,000 to find an okay condition CL65. I'm hoping that's not the case. You know, 15 years down the line or whatever. I actually have the money. I don't know. It'd be kind of a neat car to own, though. Ah, fuck. I'm surprised it's only two laps. It seems like it should have been longer, because the laps on this track are going to be just as long, or sh actually they're going to be probably shorter than, uh, oh wait, we did three laps around, uh, yeah, we did three laps around the track that took longer to go around. What? Why am I questioning the fucking logic of this game still? I thought I was going to stop doing that like ten episodes ago. I guess not. No rev limiter, please. Oh, it almost did there. If I wouldn't have shifted up, it would have. This car does like to slide a lot. I can't say I'm surprised considering it has like 500 and something horsepower. And I'm entering these corners at like way too fast the speeds for a car of this weight. It's like the most grand touring, grand touring car ever. Oh god, besides the Bentley Continental. I'd say the Bentley Continental is still one one level above this, considering the Bentley Continental weighs like 5,500 pounds. This one only weighs... Or is it 5... Is it 5,500? I can't remember. Or maybe it's 4,500. I can't... I honestly can't remember how much the uh, Bentley Continental GT weighs. I know it's a fuck ton, and I think it's a lot more than this car still. Probably because of the all-wheel drive shit. I mean, we can check it out. Although, no, I'm going to get the Vantage from this. I'm not going to get the Continental. I think there's a Continental. Is there a Continental in this game? I actually can't remember if there's a Bentley Continental GT in this game. I think there is. I'll check it out after this episode if so. Alright, and uh, there's that. I lost some credits because... I smashed into a wall at one point. Let's continue on to the final race. Alright, so we're here on our last race at Blue Mountains, and before I forget, I actually looked up a few things in between the races. Uh, it turns out the wheelbase of the Ranger is still about 10 inches longer than this car, but still, it's like only 10 inches longer than a fucking Ferrari. And uh, the Bentley Canel GT does in fact weigh close to 5,500 pounds. From what I saw, like the 2005 model Canel GT weighs about 5,300 pounds. That's more than like the average fucking three-quarter ton pickup. Like, a Dodge Ram 2500 weighs about the same as a fucking Bentley Continental GT. And it's insane. I don't know what all that weight consists of. I mean, I guess the all-wheel drive system and just... I mean, I know the cars are massive. I've never actually been up close to one in person. Oh, not that I can remember. I probably could, you know, find one to be, you know, around and look at in real life, but... I've never actually done it so far. But I don't feel like they're that, like, you know, that massive looking. But then there's all the, you know, all the technology and all the interior materials, all the leather, all of that. So I guess that's what fucking causes it to weigh as much as fucking, like, a Mercedes, like... I was going to say Mercedes G-Wagon, but I bet a G-Wagon is even lighter than a fucking Continental GT. Ah! This track sucks with this car, by the way. It does not like this track. There's too many turns. Well, I'm sure it'll like it whenever I get to the fucking straights, but, like, for now, it's just, it's not happy. Not happy at all. But we're almost to the, to the motherland. To the, you know, straights. The, you know. Those things. Alright. Shift so I don't hit the rev limiter. 
actually slow down around this turn because I bet this car is... Yep. <laughs> Thankfully, I slowed down a little bit, so it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Yeah, this car is definitely not a fan of this track. I'm not a fan of driving this car on this track, really. That's what it comes down to. I've never said I like the music of this game a lot. I think I have, but I need to say it again, because the music in this game is fantastic. Junkie XL did a fantastic job of making music. And the best part is that I can actually play it because there's like no copyright uh, issues with any of the music on this game. Any of the Junkie XL music. So that's pretty fantastic. It's not often I get to play through a game and keep the music on. Even sometimes like not racing games and not music games, I have to mute the music or else the copyright is unhappy. This, this track is very cloudy. There's some dark clouds over to the right. Eh, maybe not. I think I was just seeing the... I was mistaking... Uh, or I had them flipped around. Like, I thought, you know, the white was the sky and the blue-gray mess was the clouds, but it's not. So I feel kind of dumb right now. Kind of. Not that dumb, I guess. Uh -huh. Okay, I somehow actually managed to make that turn. I don't know how. Thank the heaven. Thank the Lord. Thank the heaven. Don't think that's the correct saying. All right, let's see if we can make it around this corner without screwing up literally everything this time. Nope. Not at all. Way worse than even the first attempt or first lap. Good job, me. You're stupid. Thanks, me. Let's see. Nope. Oh, no, I didn't get best lap, I don't think. I would have beat that best lap. Damn it. Oh. There are 19,000 credits. And that was our final race, so we shall go get our prize car. The V12 Vanquish. Which is a very cool car. My favorite has one of these. It's a six-speed six swapped, because I think they only came with an automatic... Slash paddle shifter transmission from the factory. Lots of horsepower, lots of weight, yada yada yada. Big British car. But that will conclude this episode of Forza Motorsport. I'm gonna have two of these left, and I think I'm gonna wait a bit on these. Even though I kind of want this car to actually use and stuff. Or the car you win from that. I don't think I ever use this car for anything. But uh, I think I'll wait until I have some more money to buy some more cars. Um, and I'm going to probably work on the professional events for the next couple of episodes, so that'll be the plan. So, here are my stats. Thank you all so much for watching, and for now, I am out of here. See ya.